G'day guys, welcome back again. Take two with the Liquitex Basics. These guys, <laughs> oh, last pour, what a mess. Way too many cells. My mix was too thin. I did two parts pouring medium to one part Liquitex Basics. Way too thin, way too many cells. Disaster. Anyway, it's good for you to see what goes wrong, isn't it? Because you guys think I don't do a bad pour. Yes, I do. I do lots. It's how I learn. It's how we all learn, isn't it? Trial and error. So, I'm going again. So, the last mix was two to one, as I said. I did mix my paints up. I mixed one of them up at one to one just to see what would happen. And it didn't stream off the stick. It just went glug, glug, glug in big globs so i thought well i'll do one and a half to one which this is so it's leaving a mound on a mound on a mound so it's building a little sand castle there you can see how it sits on the top pretty thick now a good way for me to tell because i if i'm using different pouring mediums or different paints the one consistency that i have is i cap count to eight seconds about that and then after that I expect my paint stream to break one two three four five six seven eight nine okay it's going a little bit longer one two three four five six seven eight well it's not Oh, there we go, it broke. Did you see that, how it just broke after eight? Maybe I was counting a bit fast on the first time. Let's do the brown. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it broke. Did you guys see that? That's how I get my consistency right. I like them all to break just after the eight second mark. So, let's hope this will work better. 60% glue, 30% water, 10% flow troll in there. Um, I was going to do another flow troll base coat. Just a little bit. Just flow troll. Just to see if my paints would slide around a little bit better. I don't like putting a white or a black base coat on personally because I end up with just too much paint because my paint personally is so thick if I put a, another thick base coat on underneath my paint would be way too thick it would probably crack um, it would take two weeks to dry um, yeah so I don't generally do a base coat if I want to make the surface a little bit slippery um, I'll either put some flow troll down like this or even some water. A little bit of water will help too. So that's it. A little bit of control. Uh, it doesn't have to go over the sides at this stage, but if you've got some running over, just rub it in. Okay. Can you guys see the little pits in there? That's the oil in the flow troll. Flow troll has a natural oil in it or some kind. I don't know how natural it is because it's a man-made product, but it's got oil in it. And you can see the little pits where the oil is. So if you guys are using flow troll and you're getting cells, that's why without silicone. Okay, so um, now my ratio, I did, as I said, one and a half to one. So I've got 70 grams of pouring medium to 45 grams of paint. So that's one and a half. And three, six, nine, 12. I think I'll cut down, I'm gonna put three drops of oil in, my silicone oil. I'm just going to do three and not in the black and the white because if you saw my last pour, it was just cell mania. Way, way too many cells for my liking. I admittedly, my mix was too thin. Um, so that was probably the main reason why. And I got a bit of mud as well. If you're getting muddy colours, your mix is too thin. Your paints are running into each other rather than staying separate. This green is a little bit too thin, but it was the last I had. It's, it's all gone. I scraped it. 
If you're using these, you can cut them in half and scrape out the centers, get every little bit out. Okay, I haven't sprayed, have not sprayed my cups with silicone oil this time because again, I don't want to contribute to any more cells than last, that I did last time. So straight away, I can see this is thicker. And as I said, I did my eight second test and uh, hopefully, hopefully, it'll be better. Otherwise, I'm just showing you guys wrong, aren't I? Okay, it's sitting on top much better this time. Not falling through like it did last time. Just sitting on top. Having a little chill with each other. Aren't you? So I've got two blues, a primary blue and a phthalo blue. This brown is burnt sienna. So just for a little bit of a brown kick. Again, beachy colours, you know, sand, sea. Change the order up a little bit. My layering order. To the last one. Can't remember what I did on the last one, but I think I had light blue next to the black. I still will have light blue next to the black, it's just down that end. So I've got the two lighter colours uh, sandwiching the black. And this is my light blue here. So I've got a few days off work now. Uh, what's today? The 27th, day after Boxing Day. And everyone's gone home. I can just chill, relax. I don't have to worry about attending to anybody, feeding anybody, no more cooking, no more cleaning, everybody's gone. It's lovely to have them, but it's lovely to have your house back to yourself again, isn't it? And you can just do your own thing when you want to do it. So back to pouring. This is my second pour this morning. And I'll probably do another one. I'll probably get three done today with any luck. And then, so today is Thursday. I'm back at work next Monday. New Year's Eve, just during the day. And then New Year's Day is a holiday, so I'm not working. And then, yeah, back into regular schedule. And the holidays is all over till the next year. Goes fast, doesn't it? Such a build up. You look forward to it and you plan and you plan and it's here and then it's gone so fast. Till the next year. So some of you guys liked that previous painting I did with the lots and lots of cells. I said, my cells had babies and my babies had babies. There was just so many of them. And they were pretty. Just, um, yeah, not what I was after. You guys know I like my big round cells and my background. So I'll try again with this, with the thicker Liquitex. Uh, if it doesn't work, I think I will just go back to what I know, my global's one-to-one -one ratio. Been working on them for over a year to get that mix and the ratio right. And I've got it right now. Well, I think I've got it right. I'm happy with the results. Seem to be able to do a consistent pour pretty much every time. And then, like today, I change it up and try something new and it's a disaster. Well, in my books, it's a disaster. You guys might not think it's a disaster, but from what I wanted to achieve, it was a disaster.
and I expect my cells to be you know, nice and round and have some background and not all bumping into each other. It was quite a, a shock seeing how reactive the mix was to the torch. If you guys saw it, you know I torched afterwards and it just exploded. Cells just exploded all over the surface. This is a nice thick mix. Look how it's sitting on top. It's not blending. It's not dropping through. So hopefully it'll be a nice mix. Scrape that last little blue, bit of blue out. I would have liked to have a navy blue, but I didn't see any navies and there weren't any on special. Not all the colours were there. Some of them obviously sold out already by the time I got to the Liquitex Basics. 50% off sale, um, but I'm not sure if Liquitex actually does a navy. You guys know I make my own navy with my global paints, so I'm not sure whether global do one because my two blues that I'm using today are very similar. That's them there, phthalo blue and primary blue, there's not a lot of difference in them. I'll show you all the colours once I've flipped these guys over. Bring that back, put it in my little areas there that I've marked out. Alright, one, two and three. Now underneath the canvas there's a, a timber bar that runs down the centre and there's a little gap Oh, half a centimetre of gap. So I've just pushed a little bit of my puppy fiddle pad. I've just sort of folded it over so it's that thick. Not very thick at all. And just popped it under there for a bit of support in the centre so that my paint doesn't pull. Because the paint's really quite thick. It's heavy. This is 800 grams of paint, which is... Oh, what did I tell you guys last time? 800 grams. Um... I don't know, I can't remember. I can't remember what I told you. It's on the previous video. Right. Uh, 800 divided by 30. It'll give you the answers. Right, so I have Mars Black, Titanium White, Burnt Umber. Uh, what does that say? Bright aqua green. These are empty. I'm going to chuck them out. And then the two blues, as I said, phthalo blue and primary blue. There's a little bit left in that one, so I'll keep that. And this one, one of my favourites, light blue permanent. So that's them. Now, as I said, I did not uh, spray these cups. So I can't actually see if the paint's released. So I'm just going to go for it. I didn't want to encourage any more cells by spraying the inside of the cups with silicone. Okay, so again I'm just going to flip these over. I don't want to drag them because they get a lovely, normally I get a lovely background when they just sort of plop out like that. And I'm going to take that straight out because I didn't want that too much of a blobby bit there. Oh, that's a pretty one. Don't run away, don't run away. No, stay with me. Why are you leaving me? Stay, stay, stay. Put it there. Well, that side's covered. Oh, look, it's still reacting. Cells popping up. I wonder if that's the flow troll that's doing this. Still reacting. Not as much as the last one. Just going to... Pour a little bit of paint out there on the corner. 
and that corner as well. I'll tilt all this off anyway, but just in case I don't, for some reason, it's covered. There's my brown. All right, I'll get the torch out. May well be the flow troll that's doing this. I'm just going to go over it once. No, don't do that, you naughty torch. because these cells that the torch is bringing up is the silicone cells that it's coming up. Those little tiny white dots, I think that's the flow troll. I've, all, I've had problems with the flow troll doing that. That's why I went to my glue and water mix in the first place to avoid those flow troll cells. So that's looking better. I've got cells. I've actually got round cells as opposed to those tiny little flow troll dots. You know what I'm going to have to do, don't you? You're all thinking it. Go back to my glue and water mix with Liquitex. See what happens. But I'm doing this because I don't want the little pinholes from the glue. But anyway. But gorgeous, look at those cells, oh my goodness. Wish I could take the camera down and take a photo. Beautiful. So can you see the difference? If you saw the last video, can you see the difference at this stage? Those other cells were like probably that big and they're starting to elongate. All right, let's do this. There's not going to be much to do. Again, so much paint. Oh, you know what it is? When I'm, when I'm flipping the cups out, the paint's sliding over the flow troll and it's spreading. It's actually spreading for me, so I'm not having to tilt, because normally I get like a little circle that big, there and there and there, and I'm having to tilt them, but it's, it's doing it for me. As we're standing here watching, this flow troll base, it's allowing the paint to just slide around on its own, so I don't actually have to do very much at all. Let's just leave it like that, hey? <laughs> no. I'll tilt a little bit, I will, because I need to cover my edges. But I think that's what's doing it. See, this is another experiment. Now I need to do it again with just glue and water and Liquitex pouring, uh, Liquitex Basics and no Floetrol base. But no, I, I like what it's doing. I like how it's spreading on its own. That was why I, I did this. Oh, I don't want to lose anything. Let's take it over to this little corner here. Make sure everything's kind of touching the edge and then all I just have to do is go whoop. Ready? Let's go whoop. Actually, I need to torch that little tiny corner there. I'm actually quite loving this, you guys. Even though the cells are small and I've really haven't got much background at all. I need to go over here so I can see when it goes over. Come on paint, off you go. Don't be shy. Go play. Alright, that'll do. I'm just gonna... It's very heavy, I've got lots of paint on here. I'll, I'll touch those little areas up afterwards. It's a bit of a shame really that I don't get to stretch them because I really enjoy the that stretching you know side to side tilting and I'm not going to be able to do much of it at all it's I could probably cut down on the amount of paint I'm using if I've got my flow troll base because as you saw it's just you know spreading on its own so I could probably cut down on the amount of paint and then I could actually tilt a little bit more. But how gorgeous are those cells, you guys? Oh, my goodness. There's a little bit of background. Oh, do I have to tilt it? 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to see if I can spread the paint out. Where's my tool? My little tool. Where are you? Here. It's just a little one. I've got a few different ones. So I've got the tiny little one. I've got this huge one. And then... I've got this middle sized one, There's so I've got a few. They're, they're very handy little things to have um, just to pick up some paint. Now, I know this is going over, so don't go, oh, it doesn't match. I'm just putting it here so that the weight of it going over the edge will drag the rest of it down. So if you make sure it goes over the edge, um, it will just drag the rest of it down and over for you so it doesn't have to match it's just going to do its job so this i'm going to have quite a lot of paint left on the surface it's going to it's going to be one of those pores that takes probably a week to dry it's going to be like you know that really what bright one i did with my very first glue and water experiment it's going to be like that where it took a week to dry even in this hot queensland temperature i have to tip this corner off because it's going a bit yucky not my terminology yucky oh so pretty i'm not going to torch this one Um, see, when I torch at the end of a, a tilt, that's when I pop all my bubbles. But when I get something like this with background, I don't want to torch again. And then the glue, when it dries, that's, it's giving me those tiny little pinholes. That's why I've added a tiny bit of glow troll to my mix. Thus, this experiment. And, um, yeah, loving it. Loving it cells, you guys. So what was this? Three drops of oil. Could have dropped down a bit more, couldn't I? Could have. Now, let's go slow. Real slow. I don't. I know this top bit here is going to start stretching and I can't do anything about that. Um, I, can't, I can't even put my hand underneath like I do with the cardboard. I'm just going to have to hold it here and let the paint do its thing and go over. Come on, doesn't want to go over there. If this corner here doesn't go over, I'm not going to be fussed with it. I don't want to lose the whole character of the paint, the painting just to get that corner to go over. So that's it, I'm leaving it like that. Um, I could have stretched all of this down to get that corner. I don't think it's a big problem. It's It's got cells in it. I, I don't think it's a problem at all. So let's bring the weight of the paint back to the middle. And there we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's very bright. Um, I don't know whether the brown's a good thing in it. So it's kind of gone a little bit muddy here and there, but I, did, I didn't want just blue. Now, where's the other one? I'll show you the other one. It's just under here drying. So I don't really want to drip on it. I'll just show you real quick. There you go. Take it away. So very different. Um, it's a lot more muddy and um, I'm just getting my fly swatter. There's a fly. Wouldn't want the fly sitting in here, would we? I'm going to have to cover it. I've got some really big nets, food nets. Um, well, it's 1.3 metres long and I'll put it down. I'll put the paw down there on the floor later and I'll cover it with a net. Right, so I just have to fill in my, my sides now. Just wanted to keep 
some of these. See these lovely black ones on the side here with the white rings? I was just trying to push them over a little bit. I don't know if I can get my hand in here and open these up. Oh, I can a little bit. Look at that. Just a bit. A little bit. Okay, that'll do. Don't fiddle. We have to learn not to fiddle, don't we? Otherwise we ruin. We can ruin a beautiful painting by fiddling. I can open this up a little bit here. Just a bit. All right. Um, now I won't waste time filling in um, all my edges. I'll do that in a minute. I'll get rid of these gloves, take you in for a close up, and then I will concentrate on my sides. Trying to zoom in. I might take you down in a minute as well and you can have a look at the, the cell structure. Uh, as I said in the previous video, uh, if you're using craft paints, you're not going to get um, as vibrant a colour um, as the professional paints because they've got more pigments in them. They're highly pigmented, they're denser paints. So, um, yeah. And it'll tell you on the tube or the container what the opacity is, whether it's opaque or transparent, semi-transparent. And if you've got that on your paint, then you pretty much know that you've got a good quality paint. The global paints are more of a student um, type of paint. I don't say anything about opacity on them or the density of the paints on them. Some will tell you the weight of the density as well. You know, how many pigments of each colour are in there. Um, but so far, I mean, the, the globals have been fine for me from what I've wanted. But you will get a, a better effect, better colours, better um, overall look from a more highly pigmented paint. Look at those cells, aren't they pretty? Um, probably a few too many cells as well, you know, I, I, do, I do like my backgrounds. Um, I haven't got a lot of background here. Sorry about that light overhead. I haven't got a lot of background. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, better result than the first one. And I will definitely have another go without the flow troll. Okay, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.